In section 2.5, we'll just start looking at the periodic table. Um, and so we already mentioned that elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. Uh, so it's the number of protons. So down here we have our periodic table. So you can see um, we had hydrogen has one um, proton, an atomic number of one, and then helium is two. And so they're arranged in order of increasing atomic number. Um, the rows on the periodic table are called uh, periods. So rows are going you know, this way. Those are the periods. And the columns are called groups or families. Um, I like families because elements in the same family have similar properties. They have similar reactivity. So, um, and they all, they have names. Uh, they have names. We can learn these names. So the ones that we, we should really look at are the you know the alkali metals, the alkaline earth metals. So the ones that are in this table, you should know. You should be able to locate metals versus non-metals and metalloids in the periodic table. Um, so this this stair step here, stair. Right here, these stairs, they kind of represent, uh, separate the metals from the non-metals. So everything up here, these guys are all non-metals. You can see those are in blue. Those are non-metals. Anything downstairs, with the exception of hydrogen, hydrogen's over here. He counts as a non-metal. Everything down here, oh, and these guys too, these are also metals. Uh, those are all metals. Everything in that uh, purple color. Um, those are your metals. So non-metals are upstairs, metals are downstairs, and on the stairs, so see these like uh, borons, so look at them. these guys right here that are right on the stairs, we kind of avoid those. Those are the metalloids, the metal avoid the loids. So the metalloids are right there. Um, we don't really play with them too much. So we want to be able to identify the difference between like the non-metals, those are, those are upstairs, versus the metals that are downstairs. Um, and some of them have names. So column one, these, these are called the alkaline metals. These are the alkaline earth metals. The ones in the middle, those are the transition metals. Let me skip from here uh, to here. Those are your transition metals. You have your lanthanides and actinides down here. We're, we're going to ignore those. Um, the noble gases are over here. Noble gases and the halogens. We should know those. So alkali metals, that's your, your real one. Alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, um, noble gases, halogens, those sorts of things. And remember, things that are the elements that are in the same uh, group, the same family, have similar reactivity. And so this question down here asks, uh, which two elements, like in this list of elements, which two do you think are going to have the, the greatest similarity in chemical and physical properties? Um, so we can kind of, uh, let's, let's highlight where they are. Um, let's erase this for a second. So let's find where all these guys are on the periodic table. And then you, you try to figure out which one you think will have similar reactivity, which two are going to have similar reactivity. All right, so here we go. Here is boron. Here is calcium. Chlorine. Helium, magnesium, and phosphorus. So now that we circled them all, which which two do you think are going to have the most the similarities in physical and chemical properties? Which two are in the same family? That's really ask, That's what they're asking. So these guys, uh, magnesium and calcium, are going to have the most similar um, chemical and physical properties because they're in the same same family. All right. In uh, the next section. In 2.6, we're going to look at uh, molecules and molecular compounds. Uh, molecular compounds. So there's different types of formulas. You have your chemical formula. Uh, chemical formulas are, have subscripts to the right of the symbol telling you how many type, how many of each type of element you have. So something like carbon dioxide over here. This is saying I have one carbon because there's nothing written down there. If it's just if there's nothing there, it just means there's one. And there's two oxygens, so that's carbon dioxide. Um, whereas over here you have carbon monoxide. You have one carbon and one oxygen. Um, so that's the chemical formula. It, it tells you, uh, you have the subscripts that tells you how many of each type you have. There are certain diatomic molecules. These are seven naturally occurring occurring diatomic molecules, uh, which means you don't usually find hydrogen, uh, neutral hydrogen, H by itself. Um, it's it's lower in energy. It's more favorable for it to be H2. Same thing with O2, N2. This is going to be important when we start writing reactions, and we're going to have to take the words and, and write reactions. And it'll just say, like, hydrogen reacts with nitrogen. You have to know that hydrogen, gaseous hydrogen is H2. There's actually two of those. Diatom, which just means you have two atoms, and they're the same. These are homonuclear, so it's the same type of atoms. So two hydrogens, two oxygen, nitrogen. Lots of different ways to remember, remember this. Um, 
uh, Honkelbrif, so that's the H-O-N, so putting them all together, Honkelbrif, Brinklehoff, if you use the first one of each element, uh, horses need oats for clear brown eyes, those are all different ways to memorize those. Um, I like to look on the, on the periodic table, I'll go back and I'll show you where everybody is. Uh, there's seven of these, and if you highlight them here, it's um, N-O-F-C-L-B-R-I, those guys here, these are all your diatomics plus hydrogen, plus hydrogen on that side. So you have NOF, CLBRI, and then hydrogen. Anglebrook, Brinkelhoff, Borges Neotes for clear brown eyes, those are lots of different ways to, to remember which uh, molecules are, are the seven naturally occurring diatomic molecules. Um, a molecular compound, just molecules containing nonmetals. So again, you have to be able to identify molecular compounds versus ionic compounds. We'll talk about ionic compounds next. Molecular compounds generally have just these nonmetals, so carbon dioxide, uh, nitrogen dioxide, anything that just has nonmetals in it, that's going to be a molecular compound. Remember the difference between nonmetals and metals, this staircase here. Anything upstairs is a nonmetal plus hydrogen, anything downstairs is going to be a, a metal. All right, so other types of formulas, you have empirical formula, and empirical formula just gives the lowest whole number ratio of atoms of each element in the type. Um, in the type. So that's something like, um, uh, of course, so empirical formula, just the simplest ratio of molecular formula that gives you the exact number. So you may know this formula, C6H12O6, if you remember what that is, glucose, that's the formula for glucose. And this is saying that there are six carbon atoms for every 12 hydrogen atoms for every six oxygen atoms. The empirical formula for this would be the simplest ratio. Instead of six to 12 to six, it's just, 1 to 2 to 1, if you just simplify that a little bit. So CH2O is the empirical formula for glucose, and this is the molecular formula. <clears throat> if you wanted to look at structural formulas, uh, structural formulas, they, just, they show the order in which the atoms are bonded. So something like uh, methane has a structural formula that looks like this, where you have one carbon in the middle, and then you have four um, hydrogens out to the side, so something like that. So the, the molecular formula here, CH4, that's an empirical formula and that also happens to be a molecular formula. Um, that's the, and that's the structural formula for something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, so let's see, can we give, give an example of an empirical formula? So I give the, give the empirical formula for diborane. So B2H6, how would we simplify that? Uh, we can divide by the, 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 the divide by 2, so we get BH3, BH3 would be the empirical formula. So this is saying like there are two borons for every six hydrogens, that ratio is the same as 1 to 3 if we simplify it, three. so BH3 uh, would be the empirical formula for, uh, for, yeah, for diborane.